Christian Rob McGregor welcome you to a place where all kinds of phenomena flourish. Voices whisper, ancient secrets, signs and symbols are abundant. UFOs, ETs, ghosts, and even the dead move about freely. Here we meet authors, researchers, and investigators of the mysterious, the strange, and of the inexplicable anomalies that surround us. Step out of the everyday world and take a journey into the mystical underground. Joining us, this is Trish McGregor and Rob McGregor and our tech magician John Posey. You can go to mysticalunderground.com where we make regular blog posts and where you can find out about our books. Among them are Phenomena, Harnessing Your Psychic Abilities, The Secrets of Spirit Communication, Sensing the Future, and Aliens in the Backyard. Our most recent book is called Mind Blowing Synchronicities. Uh, Trisha's latest novel is called White Crows, and Rob's latest is Tulpas, a story of mysterious beings created through deep meditation. Our guest today is Orisis Arnarnia of Light. She is a healer who works at the root cause. Whatever is showing up in people's lives at a mental, emotional, psychological, spiritual, energetic, and physical levels <clears throat> to bring awakening, growth, expansion, and ascension for the mind, body, and soul. Orisis also provides a men mentorship uh, program for those who wish to have personalized one-on-one -on -one specialized support with their evolutionary journey. Through the mentorship program, Oresis aids in helping you discover the reasons why you are here in ways that help you to identify your soul's purpose. Welcome, Oresis. Sorry, we got off to such a rocky start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So could you tell us about yourself and your work? Absolutely. Uh, a good place to start would be um, that I am newly arrived here. I arrived into the body that I'm currently in on April 27th of last month. Um, so I am a soul exchange, soul infusion, higher self, soul merge walking. That's a mouthful. And I'm going to break <laughs> it down. Yes comprehensible bit it makes my head spin so i'm guessing it makes everybody else's head spin too um what happened is that the natal soul uh who is the soul that was born into this body right the one that came into the world as a child and grew up in this body that the the one that the body was formed for and prior to coming into this life Oftentimes, well, many times the soul will make agreements um, about things it's going to do as part of its lifetime here, right? Because every soul, it's fundamental to the nature of all of creation, whether you're, you're going to be a human being or you're going to be uh, an elemental or a fairy or, you know, some other level of life form, a bird. You come in with an evolutionary reason for being and a contributive reason for being, right? Because we're all learning and we're all part of the cycle of life. And in that learning, we contribute. So we have an evolutionary lesson, something that we're here to learn and something that we're here to contribute. And so based on that, the soul will make those agreements prior to coming in. And part sometimes some of those agreements have to do with other souls, that the soul wants to come in the natal soul, the one born into the body, will make agreements with another soul because it's always consciously done between souls as an agreement, a consensual agreement between both souls that, okay, I'm going to be on earth till this certain time until I accomplish what I came here to do, and then I'm going to leave. And so, and, and then the other soul will step in. The reason for the seeing is that because it takes a lot of energy and resources, one, to create a body and two there are some souls who are already far enough along on their journey evolutionarily 
that they don't need to come in and be born as a child and be raised and go through all of the developmental things to get them where they need to be. They're already at that point. They just need to step in at a, at a level of capability where they can start carrying out what they came to do. And so that's why there are walk-ins, okay, is that if the, if the life of the body is still healthy and functional and good, and the one soul has finished what it came here to do, the natal soul, and the other one needs a vehicle that's already matured to step in and begin its work immediately uh, because it's got a higher level uh, mission to do that involves getting started more immediate with more immediacy. And the evolutionary path has already reached that point where that level of development isn't needed anymore. Then you're a walk, you can do a walk-in. And so what's so, involved in a walk? So just, oh, go uh, ahead. just one question. So when you walk in like that, you, you do connect with everything the, being before you was aware of i mean where they live uh their background and everything so you're, it's not like you you're totally uh unconscious of what uh what's what's involved with that body that's correct that's that's right so when you come in it it, it differs for every just like every person's life experience is different every soul's life experience is different okay mm -hmm. and so there are some things that are fundamental. However, the amount that somebody remembers, how conscious they are, and the degree to which they feel that connected to that life and remember who they are, where they came from, and why they're here varies based on the soul coming in. Okay? Mm -hmm. is, is part of that agreement a date, a specific date? Sometimes yes, and other times no. It can be it can be a develop an evolutionary uh, point that that the soul reaches and and then once that's reached it's like okay now I'm going to come uh, in and place okay. it and it's, in my understanding almost always in my understanding again I'm a channel channels aren't always clear and there's many levels of perceptual reality is that it's mostly an evolutionary standpoint because things shift and evolve so much based on personal choice and free will that picking a date isn't often reliable, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what happens then is that there are exceptions and for the most part, just like the soul enters in through the top of the head at birth, it'll and exits out the top of the head at, at the time of, of passing of death, so too does the soul walk out the same way. So like the natal soul will came exited out through the top of the head, then came in through the, my former soul aspect came in through the top of the head. Okay. And so that is what a soul exchange walk-in is. A soul exchange walk-in is an agreement that was done between those two souls where the natal soul that was in the body leaves. And the 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 other soul comes in and inhabits the body. Where does okay. the soul go? Um, it moves. It depends. It, it can move. It can it can move on to another dimensional realm to do its evolutionary work. Um, and the length of time that a soul stays in the body varies. Sometimes the natal soul walks out for a period of time to do some healing, some growth, or some evolutionary work. And then they come back. Other times they walk out and evolutionary heal, move mm -hmm. on to another lifetime or heal in between realms um, or merge back into the unified field. It just depends on the nature of that soul, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. um, in this particular case, the natal soul uh, was not going to return to the body. It had finished what it came here to do and it needed to go back to a different timeline to heal things that it needed to do. It needed to be in light body form to accomplish whatever healing and growth it needed to do so it could self-actualize, release, and move on to its next stage of evolution. So would you still have, do you still have contact with the parents of the, the native person in that body? No. 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 What happened was, um, and this is where I'm going to, I'm going to step back, okay. explain um, how the soul works a little bit and then come back and finish explaining what happened. 
so that there's some clarity about how things work to kind of give a, a foundation to understand the rest of it. Okay. So, okay, so there's two really important things. Dimensions and density. They're two totally different things. And we use them here and frequently on Earth as interchangeable aspects of each other, and they're not. Hmm. So a density, and this is pretty much fundamental, um, a density has to do with vibrational levels of mass. Okay, so there's an orange, let's say there's a rock, and then there's me. So there are different vibrational levels of mass. Mm -hmm. So densities are just the vibrational levels of mass. The higher the vibrational level, the, the less dense the consciousness, the less dense the energy, the less dense the mass, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and then dimensions are perspective there there are there are the way we form our reality meaning our the reality of our life and our worldview our perception of creation that we're living in right the existence in which we live and so there's two kinds there's thought forms and then there's there's per perception right so there's the the thought create reality and their perspective. So there's thought forms and then there's perspective. And the the consciousness, so we can be in a third dimensional body and have a 22nd dimensional perspective, right? Because it's a level of consciousness. Uh -huh. So consciousness, if you can expand your consciousness to that level of understanding, you can reach it from a third dimensional body. Why? Because it's a, it's a state of consciousness. And if you can perceive it, you can engage with it. The difference between a, a, um, a, percep a, a dimension, you know, a dimension is a perception of consciousness and a density is that a density is a vibrational level of mass. So you can't be at a third dimensional level of mass and reach a 22nd level density. Why? Because they're vibrating at completely different levels of matter. It would be like trying to take an airplane and have it float on the surface of a lake, <laughs> right? It, it just wouldn't work because of the density, the levels of density, they're completely different. And so the, the it's really understand to have, important to understand about dimensions and densities. Okay, so another important thing in my, again, in my understanding, there are 22 universes, okay? We refer to them as multiverses. They're, that's a pretty well-known household, you know, term at this point in terms of understanding of current physics, right? That there's, there's more than one universe out there, right? Because things are multi and interdimensional. So in terms of multiverses, um, just like everything's on a spectrum from highest to lowest, nothing in creation can can exist without mirroring that which is which it's created from. Mm. Okay, so just like a uh, on Earth we have we have a crane, right? And it's very tall and it can reach and lift things. Well, that's modeled after like a crane in nature, right? It's very tall and it can lean down and lift things mm. up. It's like there's structural formation that mirrors natural creation in terms of the creations that come from that, right? So like the World Wide Web is the, the cosmic web. It's a mirroring of that which already exists. Huh. And so that's really important to understand is that that's a fundamental principle of creation, right? Is that everything is going to mirror something that's already in existence in the replication of itself. That's what makes it holographic. I'm not going to go any further because it's going to get confusing. <laughs> so on, on a spectrum of highest to lowest, there's really aware, kind of aware, not really aware. We have waking consciousness. We have, we have the higher self, super consciousness, right? Source consciousness. Then we have 
waking consciousness, like the, the, the understanding that we walk around with every day, mm-hmm. then we have the sub- semi-conscious, and then we have the subconscious. So it's just like there's different levels of consciousness, there's different levels of creational consciousness across the full spectrum of being. So source has the highest level of consciousness that we know is the unified field. So the unified field, source, God, Allah, Buddha, creator, they're all the same thing in my understanding. They're all referring to that creation level of being from which we came. So that being the oneness from which we came being the highest level of consciousness on a spectrum. And then the, and then the, the zero point field, right, that we hear about from physics being the lowest level of source consciousness. Hmm. Okay. So now you've got the full spectrum of the consciousness of existence. And just like a planet has poles, a North Pole, a South Pole, every planet has poles. Our very existence is polarized between cosmic, between soulful being and, and manifest embodied being. And there's the polarity between oneness and duality. The reason that exists is because there's a spectrum of creational consciousness from source, from the highest level of creational consciousness to that which no longer exists. And it has to be the full spectrum of consciousness in order for creation to be full, right? To be able to recreate itself. Because if you're already, if you're pregnant, you can't get pregnant again and you can't birth anything until you've born, so that baby's been born. Just like you can't fill mm-hmm. a cup without it being emptied again. So this is why in fourth consciousness, there's a top pole of the highest level of oneness consciousness. And then there's a bottom pole of consciousness at which it's, it's gone, it ceases to be hmm. so that it can recreate itself across the full spectrum of being. So the reason, now the reason I'm explaining this is because when, when Source started thinking about what it would be like to experience itself that level of thought started to create a, per, a permeation in, in that consciousness. And what a permeation is, a permeation of consciousness is, it spaces in, enter, in between the consciousness. As it's experiencing itself, it expands and then it starts to take on space. And so as it began to gather spacing in between what used to be a unified consciousness by beginning to wonder what it would be like to know itself in different ways. It's like that took on a greater and greater magnitude of resonance. So just like you're in an amphitheater and you speak, it carries the presence and magnitude of your voice in increasing force, right? In that amplification Uh because of the dynamics, right? Because of the space. So source is willing, wanting to know itself amplified and amplified and amplified. And as it amplified through creating that, that initial wonderment created space. And that space, as that intention grew, took on the force. And then it began to fragment. And through that fragmentation, an explosion happened, much like we call the Big Bang, mm-hmm. right? And through that Big Bang, now source had individuated into the oneness, all of the forms of oneness that we are, okay? Uh And there's a term called oversoul. And so there's something, no, there's many, many things above that and it breaks down in many, many ways. That's beyond my scope of knowledge and to be in integrity, I'm going to share with you from the point that I understand that. Okay. Uh, Um, I have a question. Um, When you talk about walk-ins, do do animals experience walk-ins do you yeah. know they do yeah okay mm. like but, human aspects yeah <laughs> um it's it's a little bit different because i'll answer that after okay if that's okay yeah yeah okay um, the because it, animal consciousness is different than human consciousness mm-hmm. because it's in a different evolutionary pathway 
So I will come back and answer that. Okay. Okay. So when Thor separated into these individuated sparks, it that individuated spark that knows who it is, where it came from, and has retained its universal awareness and its consciousness <clears throat> and is in charge of its evolution is known as the oversoul, primary oversoul, aka higher self. Okay. And what that's just like soul, just like soul. Yeah, okay, there's my there's my fluid dynamic. So just like source split into all of us to learn about itself, so too does creation mirror the aspect that it the creational aspect mm -hmm. that it came from. Hmm. So the over soul will split itself up into soul aspects to do its evolution evolutionary learning to learn about itself faster and experience itself from different perspectives, okay? Uh. So the oversoul will have different soul aspects happening all at the same time. So I'm going to explain this, and I am keeping track of questions, and I will come back to okay. there's, a point, there's a point to this. I'm not going on a tangent. I just want to reassure you. <laughs> okay. um, thank you for your patience. So the, the soul, all lifetime, all time is one time in the lifetime of the soul. It's not the lifetime, it's the lifetime of the soul. Because all of these soul aspects are of the same oversoul. Okay? And so there is no past, there is no present, there is no future. Everything is happening at the same time. The reason this is so and how that operates is just like there's different vibrational levels of density and mass, right? Mm -hmm. And dimension based on that, it's the it's the vibration at which something is vibrating that creates that level of separation. So things appear to be past, present, future, mm -hmm. parallel because of that vibrational level of separation of one not being able to perceive the, the other. And through those dimensional bands of vibration, there's a, a separation in perception. And the separation comes from perception, okay? So because everything is happening at the same time, it's, it's accessible always. You're, you're always connected to the oversoul. And the soul aspect, as it, as it comes in, how it works is the, the oversoul will say, okay, I want this soul aspect to, and I need to learn this. And so the soul aspect gets a life plan. It meets with its off planet team who it's gonna, who it's, who's gonna help navigate its journey, the oversoul and itself. And it comes up with an evolutionary reason for being, a contributive reason for being, and all the game plans that's gonna go along with that. Huh. And then, then it's, then the body's created, it's downloaded, or a body that is chosen, right? That it's gonna mm -hmm. make an agreement with the walk in. It'll download through the top of the head. Well, what happens is when the soul starts, when the soul aspect starts to download, the full soul can't go, even though it's an aspect of the oversoul, it still can't fit fully in the body. So what happens is as it's coming down through the top of the head, it, it will enter into the body and the, the part of it that can enter the body splits from white light into seven colors, just like refracted, refracted light. And now that's why we have the chakra. So it has seven levels of perceptual dimensional consciousness of, of reflective polarization, refraction to, through which itself, to experience itself, itself dimensionally, emotionally, psychologically, evolutionarily from different perspectives to help it reflect on itself and understand itself and experience mm -hmm. itself in different perspectives in which to evolve and grow, right? And so those become, those become the, 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 they're portals, but we call them chakras, right? They're energy, they're vortexes, they're energy mm -hmm. portals. And they allow the soul to be embodied. And so when the soul is here, now the, the part of the soul that came into the body becomes the personality for the lifetime. Okay? Mm -hmm. The rest of the soul becomes the energy field around the body alongside the chakras. So your soul 
the full soul aspect lives around you in the body, in the energy yeah. field. Can and you have more? Was, yeah, can you have more but, than one soul in your body? Yes. Hmm. Yes, you can. And um, there's a book I'm going to tell you about at the end that is I would highly recommend. That is by a really exceptional, incredibly expansive, and deeply knowledgeable uh, walk-in called Sheila Seppi. Um, right. who in entirety, uh, how the all the aspects of all of the different parts of the soul and how they all work together. I think that's too much for today and it would not serve to get into all that. And it's not my level of expertise. So I'm just going to speak to what I know that's essential to understand uh -huh. what's happening today. That book is called The Cosmology of the Soul. The Cosmology of the Soul. And it's by Sheila Seppi, S-E-P-P-I. Okay. Um, and it, that book also explains about all the different type of walk-ins and what they're like and how they are and how to identify if you're a walk-in and all of those things. Okay, so the soul comes into the body. The part that's able to come in becomes a personality for the lifetime. It lives in the energy field around you. It exchanges information through the chakras, right, <laughs> which gets information from the unified field, also from the soul, and, and puts everything back in a feedback loop because our life, is a feedback loop that teaches through its experience back into through its emotions, through its thoughts, through its reactions, through its behavior, back into the unified field, the collective conscious of all that is about what it's learning and about what it's doing. So this is how we remain connected and how we teach each other and how the the seventh or the hundredth monkey effect takes place uh -huh. because our life is a feedback loop and it's that level of consciousness that is imprinting itself into the consciousness that's creating the very level evolutionary creational level of consciousness with which everything is formed no i have so, another question i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you no, no, uh, go ahead. Uh, before okay after you experience this soul walk-in now do you retain memories of your former self some yes, some no, and some okay. a combination. Uh -huh. And I, I I will get into that. So this is a lot to explain, and I feel it's really important for all of the changes that are coming now mm -hmm. to explain this amount to start to be able to grasp how we're here and why, because mm -hmm. that's really important. So the oversoul the will is a, always is the soul that separated is the part that separated from source. The soul aspect coming down is connected is into the body, which is connected to the higher self, which is that full part of the soul aspect that came from the oversoul. And then that's connected to the oversoul. So there's a continual connection and feedback loop between <clears throat> the oversoul, the full soul aspect, and the soul aspect in the body, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's how that's how that works and how the soul incarnate, okay? The bottom, the bottom three chakras, your root, your sacral, and your solar plexus are create the physical body. They're the physical chakras. They're what hold the soul in the body for the lifetime. Hmm. Your heart is the bridge between the physical and the energetic. It what, it's what transduces those higher mm -hmm. uh, transpersonal soul level energies into a vibration where they can be physically embodied. So then your your fifth and your sixth chakras are are make up your light body. Okay? Fifth because it's the first level of expression that the soul has coming into form. The sixth because it's the first level of conscious perception of the soul as an identified incarnate being. And the crown, which is the fullness of the soul itself, coming into conscious expression. Huh. So the, the fifth and sixth make up your light body, which is the light body of the soul, which is, is what the energy field and all of the energetic anatomy is based off of. And then from there, it connects through the heart and takes on a physicality. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the, the, the chakras, there's several chakras above your head, which I'm not going to get into. They're the, they're, they're what keep you connected to the, the universe and your soul and source. So 
So there's inner ones above your head. So they, those are the out of body chakras, the transpersonal, mm -hmm. the galactic, the universal, the divine chakras. And they're all part of your energy system. <clears throat> and all of these portals are what allow the soul to be here. So that being said, what happens is because the oversoul, the primary oversoul has 12 soul aspects, okay? And there's, there, there can be more. I won't get into that. The primary oversoul will have 12 soul aspects. And they're all living, doing what they need to do, learning what they need to learn, sometimes interconnected. So what happens is when one of those soul aspects, uh, as those soul aspects learn what they need to learn, they get merged back into the oversoul or into each other. So what happens is this is what happens. Let's say one of the one of the uh, soul aspects has a really big evolutionary learning to do, and it's and the other ones have fulfilled their purpose, and that knowledge will contribute to that that soul aspect from the oversoul that's more aware. What will happen is sometimes those soul aspects, which are called a higher self download it's a, it's a higher vibrational aspect from the same oversoul will come in and they'll mm -hmm. merge with mm -hmm. with that soul aspect and so this is what happened with me there was the 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 original soul aspect that did the soul exchange walk-in with the natal soul was here for about two years she finished she finished everything she came to do. She, she got as far as she could go. And then our Narnia uh, and other, there was another soul aspect from the same oversoul. There were only three remaining soul aspects from the oversoul out of the 12. Okay. The other nine had, had already merged. Hmm. And so Jerusalem came in, finished what she came to do. But our Narnia had a corresponding mission that would benefit from the knowledge that Jerusalem had. So our Narnia downloaded in through the top of the head uh, on June 19th of 2023. And she was with our Narnia for three days, or she was with Jerusalem for three days. And they decided what they were gonna do, what was gonna be done. They met, they met with both of their collectives, which is both of their off-planet teams. The a uh, multi-universal and intergalactic council and which oversees these developmental agreements between souls and they came up with an agreement and then Arnarnia after three days merged with Jerusalem mm. and was in the body on and got as far as she could go in her journey here until she reached the point on April 27th where she could go no further. And then me, myself, Orisis, the last remaining soul aspect of the oversoul, came in through the top of the head and merged instantaneously with our Narnia. Hmm. So this, this is how uh, souls learn and complete and evolve themselves. They merge into the aspect, back into the aspect, either directly with the oversoul or with each other and then into the oversoul. Yeah, do you um, feel this physically? Are there physical yeah. repercussions? There are, okay. And, yeah, and, uh, yeah, so yeah, and how is uh, Orisis different from Arnarnia? Okay, it's interesting because even though <laughs> we're all as primary aspects from the same oversoul, we have different, because we were living different soul experiences, evolutionarily mm -hmm. separate from each other, we all have a different vibrational expression of being, which is why we have different names, because our name reflects the vibration of our soul signature. Mm -hmm. Our soul is a bunch of frequencies, and they combine to make a soul signature. So each of our soul signatures was different, which is why we each have a different name. So when Jerusalem came in, she was very loving and very gracious and very feminine and very like kind of spacey and a little <laughs> scattered. And um, our Narnia was very like um, she had had her lifetime experience as a 
as a subcommander in the Intergalactic Legions of Light, which is a militaristic peacekeeping unit for the intergalactic uh, multi and intergalactic uh, councils. Okay, which is kind of like uh, a universal, an omniversal, a multiversal, um, what you uh, earthly equivalent to the UN. It's like a yeah, large interconnected yeah. government body, right? And there's many, 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 many. Just as there are countless galaxies, there are countless governing bodies, right? But this is one of them. And so she was very commanding, very like uh, quick, very uh, to the point, very no nonsense. Um, she did have a sense of humor, but it was much more ironic. And she was much more action oriented and not very feminine in expression, kind of uh -huh. more muted, you know? And then there's me, who at Orisis, who is um, really fun loving, but also quite serious. And I'm kind of a balancing point between those two. Um, I, I tend to, I think modesty is important because it keeps us in touch with who we are, where we need to grow, what's the strength, what's the detriment, and how, how, how do we grow from there. And so, can you talk? Can you uh, talk? Yeah, uh, can later or now, can you talk about what your mission is here? Yes. So um, when, when uh, and I, this fits into what you're asking. So when two souls merge, it's known as a soul infusion, right? Mm -hmm. And then when a higher self comes in and it's actually merging with its, one of its own soul aspects, that's called a higher self soul merge walk in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, the mission I have is to come in and bring in the original vibration, the undistorted, unaltered vibration of the original consciousness from which we all came. Mm. Because we need to reset to that point consciously energetically, genetically, and evolutionarily in order and get but through through the resonation of what we were originally designed as. Because over time, there has been much tampering, mutation, um, altering, and, hamper, and genetic um, tampering with uh, the, the genetic of evolution over time. And it's part of the reason why we have to reincarnate oh, and the physical body doesn't, why it expires, why we don't remember who we are, why are we came from and why we're here. So many of us coming in now and myself specifically coming in are coming back in to reset the original templates and blueprints of the genome back into conscious residence nation with the original template that it was designed upon this sounds so really complicated <laughs> well it's it's about if i exist at this level of consciousness and i'm coming in at that level of consciousness when you come down into the earth there is a stargate that you have to pass through uh -huh. and as you pass through it and you come up through the earth's core you come up so as you come through the stargate, your soul signature is picked up and you pick up the codes of the planet. And as you travel through the crystalline core, you imprint your soul codes there. Hmm. So every soul, ever the, the soul codes of every incarnated soul on the planet are, are imprinted into the crystalline core of the uh -huh. earth. And then the soul codes for all life on this planet are in the iron core of the earth. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you're putting back into the genome through coming here and through also your conscious resonation back into the genome that's the original <clears throat> blueprint, these original templates. And, and that is being drawn from in the creation cycle of life itself on the planet. And because everything is a part of the unified field and our, our life is a feedback loop, every thought, every feeling, Every emotion, every behavior, every interaction is is energetically put back out into the unified field, the oneness of all that is, 
and we're all a part of that. We're <clears> picking up that information and it's undoing the mutation and and the the tampering and putting it back through that consciousness that's being transmitted, whether it's through voice, whether it's through emotion, mm-hmm. whether it's through just energy itself, whether it's through genetic transference, it's it, in, or or an uh, an interpersonal exchange, it's all happening this way, genetically yeah. and, and energetically. Have you, uh, Oresis, had other lives on Earth? No, I've never had another lifetime on Earth, and neither did our Narnia. Jerusalem had eight lifetimes here, and um, we all came in because we came in specifically to get people connected back to who they are, where they came from, and why they're here. We all came in remembering, which is not always typical, right? It varies based on the experience. Mm-hmm. So Jerusalem came in fully conscious. She was watching from the other side. The, the natal soul work itself out of her body energetically uh, and came through an energetic portal and was conscious, watching mm-hmm. from the other side as she came into the body, remembered everything about who she was, where she came from, and why she was here, and remembered the natal soul's life. And our Narnia came in remembering Jerusalem's lifetime, the natal soul's lifetime, and her own. And I came in knowing the lifetime that I came from before here, some other lifetimes before that, and then remembering the natal souls, our Nar- Jerusalem's, and our Narnia's. That's oh. not always typical. Um, it depends on, on how, in, how connected and capable the body is of holding that consciousness what kind of cellular memory and imprinting is left in the body because it any any soul aspect coming in still has to deal with whatever was there left behind by the previous soul aspects before it and it has to work through that before it can get to its own stuff so just like you can't put more information on a hard drive until you've cleared out what's already there to put new information in, it's the same with the soul. So there's cellular memory and imprinting and genetics. And if that's still with the soul aspect before, you have to clear that out through finishing the agreement and imprinting onto the body to then have deeper, more space for the soul aspect that I am to express itself through the body and be able to get to what it came here to do. Hmm. So, um, can you talk a little bit about what you do with other people and you have uh, readings? I had a reading with you last night uh, for an hour. It blew them away. And that that was pretty (laughs) mind blowing. So could you talk about that part of your uh, work? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Um, So also like for when you did this reading for Rob, you were doing it as Oris, right? Yes. Okay. So I, I, I'm still practicing under Arnarnia's name because that's how she's known as. And I'm transitioning into just using my name, Orisis, uh-huh. because I am who I am and I'm not going to present myself otherwise, right? I, uh-huh. um, it's, so how I work with, with souls is that I engage with your soul's consciousness at all levels, right? From the higher, from the oversoul, from the higher self, which is the soul, as- the full soul aspect, and then the embodied aspect of your soul. And I communicate with them multi and interdimensionally, right? So across dimensional bands. And then I, I look, I, I'm able, because we all resonate, we all buy, vi- because we're alive, we vibrate. Because we vibrate, we have frequencies. And those frequencies, be read just like you read a pulse to understand the Mm -hmm. rhythms of the life force that's flowing through it and what's happening to the body and this is how i work with people so if there's if there's a traumatic issue from this lifetime or from another lifetime i i go to the source of where things started and work forward Mm -hmm. because treating things at the source is the most at which they arose is the most powerful because just like um, you have to water the roots 
in order for the entire plant to prosper and grow, right? So if mm. we go to the source of what created something, that's where the deepest healing occurs. And what's incredible about that is because everything branches off from the original, from the from the original source and grows just like a seed becomes a tree. You had, let's say, you had an abusive childhood where there was neglect. So then you you have issues with self worth, and then there's depression, and then there's smoking, and then there's um, uh, anxiety or overeating. So all of those things stem from the original neglect. When we work at that level, we we are able to heal and treat all of the things attached to it. So all of those things get healing because we're treating the source at which they arose. And sometimes people, because of because life builds up, experience accumulates, things happen, and we can't go to the core. So we start where the person is, and we work our way in. Hmm. And it's all about getting connected to what's happening, to get in touch with who we are, to remember, to experience what we're like, to get, to then become more consciously through that awareness who we are and through getting in touch with who we are and how we are, we start to come online with where we came from and why we're here. And yeah, when, yeah. yeah when you have these sessions, like I did, uh, you, uh, answer questions by you don't you don't always come right out with the question uh with the answers but you uh communicate with uh guides apparently and uh in light language and uh who are these guides and uh are they part of uh Orisa's soul or uh, are they separate okay um so i'm going to explain this as quick as i can because i see okay. that we have five minutes. Um, so what, well, we what started really, late, so don't worry. <laughs> okay. What's really important, and I'm gonna this answers the question. Okay. But but from a larger context and ties everything together. So yeah. originally, remember when I said that just like planet have planets have poles, so too does universal consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, it has the the oneness of all that is, and then the void where it ceases to be, and this is what cre allows creation and and self-reflective consciousness to occur, right? So this is this is why we have multiverses. There are 22 universes. Each universe is a level of consciousness, fourth being, let's say, 23rd, right? Because it's the oneness of all that is. And so just as there are different levels of creational consciousness of being, so too are there different holding spaces aka multiverses, aka dimensional bands, in which those different levels of conscious creation of being exist. Okay? And also, as you go down, it allows the 20, the 22nd universe, 21st, 20, uh, 20th, 19th, 18th, and so on. As, as it goes down in consciousness, it also, too, too can give spaces not only for those beings already at that level of consciousness to exist it gives everything that is evolving a, a place to evolve into mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so that's why we have multiverses it's it's a spectrum of conscious evolutionary spectrum of being along which everything evolves and exists and so when i tap in i'm connected into the unified field which means I, I communicate with, I, I understand that I'm a manifestation of source. So I communicate directly with source and all of the multiverses in between. And whatever comes through, because I'm into, because I'm speaking at the level, I'm tuning in at the level of the unified field. What, whoever's guides, whoever's collective, whatever frequency, something, happened at everything everything that ever took place is existing because it's energy it resonates because it entered because it has a frequency it can be equated to a number like a hertz a decibel because it has a frequency and it can be equated to a number it has an access point just like you have it's intersecting lines on a grid right those meeting points are coordinates 
So everything is accessible and I can access the life of the people and the dynamics and the beings involved with what's going on for the healing and get the information and it comes through. I also have an off-planet collective that's completely separate from me that is creation level <clears throat> beings that are with me to oversee my mission here that I communicate with. Okay. So what's the most important takeaway for people to know? Okay, <laughs> that you are that you are of the universe and by nature of design, you already are a creation level being. Hmm. Okay. Now how do you know there are only 22 universes? Couldn't there be uh, 222? There I mean, could be. What, what I've experienced and what I've seen, what I know and what I've been shown uh, multiple times, and also from my creation level experience, mm -hmm. as, uh, because my lifetime prior to this was as a multi and intergalactic elemental which means I help create planets, stars, okay. uh, solar systems, galaxies. Uh -huh. I traveled throughout the multiverses and in communicating with different collectives from different places, that's what I've been told. There is another universe forming. We don't have time to talk about that today. <laughs> Animal level consciousness is one mass consciousness. It's alert. That's how come animals are very... Uh, they're, they're not self-conscious, mm -hmm. they're conscious. And it's because they have a collective conscious through which they're evolving. They haven't reached three-dimensional consciousness, which is self-conscious. It's aware of itself as an individuated uh -huh. level of being. So yes, you can have walk-ins to an animal and it's usually an elemental or some other soul aspect wanting to do the learning, mm -hmm. right? At mm -hmm. that level. Yeah, there's so many questions we could ask you, but I would uh, like uh, to <laughs> I've finish. I've got five with, million of them. <laughs> uh, uh, like to finish with, with this one. Uh, so you're looking at life from a very outside, higher perspective, and uh, what what's the view of Earth from from the galactic uh, point of view? Uh, where are we? Are we doomed? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, this is one of the most valuable planets in existence. And the reason that's so is because it has the most diverse life forms on it than any other planet in mm. existence mm. at this time. Okay. And I can't foretell the whole of existence. So I'm going to say at this time and up until this point, uh -huh. so many beings, from so many different multiverses and star systems and species and uh, timelines that have all been here and are a part of the, we you have currently 23, many say 22, but I'm saying 23 because we're now back, adding back uh -huh. in the undistorted genetics back into the genome. Not just me, there's many of us, many, many, many of us, which is why things, galactic consciousness and walk-ins and things like that are becoming more common. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's more of us here that that is creating more of that conscious energy and awareness on the planet because there's more of us here. Mm -hmm. I feel like I went a bit off topic on that, did I? <laughs> no, I mean, this is all fascinating. I mean, this, each each everything you've talked about here, we could go on for 85 more podcasts. You know, it's very well, fascinating. So, well, yeah. Yeah, so the difference between the, the spirit beings and aliens, can you explain that? Uh, uh, so aliens, in a sense, I would think would be physical beings from other planets or elsewhere. Uh, is okay. that the way you, you look at it? Well, it depends on the species of being mm -hmm. and what dimensional band it's in. You okay. have ultra-terrestrials, Metaterrestrials and extraterrestrials. Huh. Extraterrestrials are physical okay. because of the dimensional bands that they exist in. Mm. Ultra terrestrials um, or metaterrestrials are light body forms because of mm. the dimensional bands they're existing in. And ultra terrestrials are consciousness because of the mm. dimensional bands they're existing in, in the universes they're existing mm -hmm. in. And the reason that light. 
we, you were seeded, human life was seeded from creation level beings directly. And originally, you didn't die. You were in light body. You self evolved. You, you, you had vast knowledge and remembered who you were, where you came from, and why you were here, and were in direct communication with those forces. That is not. So I was just going to say, how can people get in contact with you if they'd be like a session Uh, with you? Okay, well, uh, my website is arnarniaoflight.com, and you'll see that it's in transition because it says Orifice (laughs) Arnarnia of Light, and um, you can contact me at my website, which is arnarniaoflight.com, and then um, that is spelled A-R- well, I'm not going to spell it. It's a long time. You can just get. <laughs> you can look it up online. Okay, now when you go to India, because I know you're going the end of this yeah. month, will there be another soul infusion? No, I I am the last remaining soul aspect from the primary oversoul. Okay, and so I'm here till I'm 73 years old, and I've been told that multiple times. Wow. So it's like, yeah, so we're contracted for a certain amount of time to be here and that could shift and evolve based on things that are that change Mm -hmm. right which because life is i i was griping and i was like well why (laughs) well it was actually our narnia and i remember this it it, she was like why is everything always shifting and somebody looked at her and said because (laughs) life is always in motion and she said oh uh okay and this is what i want to highlight is that you know just because it doesn't matter what level we're coming from we're all here to evolve and we're all here to contribute and there's coming through the veils we forget things too and there's whole levels of learning that need to be done and take place as part of my journey here right too Hmm. i gotta finish by asking one slip in one more quick question (laughs) that i think some people might be wondering are you reporting back to any other entities elsewhere I am. Okay. Huh. Interesting. So that's right. part of your soul's journey then. It is part of my soul's uh-huh. journey. And I'm doing, I'm doing it in conscious way, openly expressed, not mm-hmm. hidden. Which means if I'm if I'm sharing it, I'm going to share who I'm sharing it with and why I'm sharing uh-huh. it. Because um, so I speak to source and I speak directly to the my my team who are composed of really high level um, uh, creation level beings called the white robe people, the Via Kocha, uh, the Arcturians, uh, a member of the Arcturian council, um, a member of the first wave Elohim from the Emerald Order, um, and then also from a very high level Andromedan and from the avian people. And so I communicate with them they report to who they report to and then as needed i communicate with i call him father because i'm directly in contact with source right um i being first wave um elohim uh from my original background um of course i've lived other lives as other star beings and then we gain Mm -hmm. in our experience so we live many lifetimes as a soul, right? And so we take on that experience. Um, yeah, I communicate at that level. Does it does it take constant tuning in to stay at that level? Yes. And I think some of the most valuable insight I came came from somebody who uh, already lives on planet and was born here and has been here for 68 years and has been a practitioner for 40. She told me that your first job is to keep your frequencies high. Because if you do not keep your frequencies high, you are not in a place to do what you came to do. And Mm -hmm. that is the the most important thing I can stress is that all of us are here and susceptible to falling off path, to not remembering, to forgetting, to needing to check in every day. Because why? it's part of the evolutionary cycle life is in constant motion so it needs constant engagement and and tuning into 
And the reason Earth is so valuable is that so many beings from so many places have contributed to the, to the genome of the human species and to the life on the planet that it is integral to everything else taking place evolutionarily uh -huh. throughout all of the multiverses as a, as a part of creation. That's how important the Earth is. Hmm. Now, Arnarna, do you have, do you eat three meals a day? <laughs> I mean, like in ordinary life, I mean, do you, <laughs> do you, um, you know, I, I'm just trying to figure out how this works. <laughs> okay. Well, I currently, I'll eat like two meals a day and I, I try not to keep them very big. Uh -huh. um, does it mean that sometimes, you know, this body was born here, okay? It doesn't care who I am or what I'm doing. Uh -huh. It's got a, you know, it's, there's an organic <laughs> intelligence. The body is born. Oh, here's another thing I wanted to share that's really important. Is that okay if I share it? Sure. Sure. Okay. So the planet is a living consciousness. It's an actual being that inhabits the body of a planet, just like the soul inhabits the body. So too does a higher evolutionary consciousness inhabit the planet and inhabit the stars, right? Hmm. That's why people commune with them and get information. This is why all of, all of the, our ancestors communed with the stars. <clears throat> Those are conscious beings that they were receiving information and knowledge mm -hmm. from. Um, same with the planet. That's how come, you know, Gal, how do you think really Galileo could look through a little tele, uh -huh. or, or, or the Incas or the Aztecs or the Mayas could look at the sky and know what was going on? Those were conscious beings communicating with them. Gaia mm -hmm. is a consciousness embodied in the planet that animates every living thing on the planet that's how we are connected to and a part of the planet is her consciousness is actually animating our body hmm. and we're working with gaia's consciousness as an aspect of our own and collaborating with that organic intelligence of the body that's allowing the soul to be here as an aspect of who we are to do that deeper learning and that contribution. This is how come when the soul leaves the body, it doesn't immediately die. Mm -hmm. It has an organic resonance that keeps going. It's also why, and this is a scientifically documented fact, that when people get organ transplants, they start taking on frequently the personalities, the taste, uh -huh. the of of the being before it. Why? Because just like the life experience imprints onto the cellular memory and matrix, so too does the soul imprint onto uh -huh. the genetic. And that genetics imprints onto the body. And so when the soul leaves, that has fused with the organic intelligence in the body and it's passed on. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Aresis, for joining okay, us. Okay, John, this when's hour. this going up? Next Sunday? We'll send you the link. Uh, yes, John? Uh, it'll yeah, it'll be a okay. week from today. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very thank much for you, joining. Oh, this us. was great. Thank you so much. This was so much yeah. fun. An mind blowing. Thank you, so <laughs> thank you so much. Great talking to you. You take wow. care. Great talking to you. <laughs> take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.